We need to be ahead of the targets. We're behind the curve. I think Hawaii is ahead of most. I'm extremely proud to live in Hawaii because we're the first state in the United States that said we're going to be 100% renewable by 2045. And, um, you know, I remind people all the time that's not a guideline, that's a law. So we need to get moving, we have to get going, um, and it can't happen soon enough. And so it's, it's, a, it's a set of complex issues that are not going away uh, anytime soon and in fact are just becoming more urgent as we continue to see climate risk manifest. I'd like to recognize our very generous sponsors. This conference could not happen without their generosity. Mahalo to our exhibitors also, but let's take a moment for applause for our sponsors. If we're gonna get there by 2045, we can't start in 2040. Um, these are expensive, elaborate projects, even the farming. It takes years to get land into production, get the system set up, get the equipment. Um, we're not going to turn this thing on and off quickly. There's not a consensus right now. I mean, I, I look out at these hundreds of people and there's some very, very smart people out there, but I don't see a consensus on really, you know, exactly what we're trying to do. So probably that shows why it's important to keep having these conversations. We want to be 20 years from now, we want to be sitting up here and, you know, not having conversations of lessons learned. <laughs> it's look what we did. We didn't have, you know, we didn't have any issues or the issues were minor. Look how, look how we rode through this. I feel like I leave here smarter. You know, I feel like I leave here more engaged. I feel like I leave here um, uh, energized to go and do better and, and, and with our energy processes, things we, what we bring to our business and things that we can do to help others. So. By having a diversified slate of renewable alternatives, I think is really key to be having resiliency. If you find yourself dependent on one kind of technology or one kind of application, I think that's very limiting. You know, the state of Hawaii is the most petroleum dependent state in the nation. And so you can see a distribution of about 58% of that comes in terms of feedstocks and crude oil. If we can get to a future with a different bridge that decreases our reliance on classic fuel, oil, diesel, but gets us there in a healthier way, I think we have to look at it. It's really unfortunate that it often takes a disaster like this to prompt action. We need to get more data. We need to understand the actual potential of the state's resources. The truth of the matter is that uh, community-driven planning is changing the game as well. And I have to give credit to the Public Utilities Commission for allowing that to happen. We all have had a vision for a very long time, but it's becoming increasingly challenging um, because of the limited resources we have in Hawaii and the choices that have to be made. At the same time, underscoring the need to have broader conversations with many perspectives and, many much, and much more participation. So the willingness for people to not be afraid of community engagement, but to welcome it and see it as necessary is vitally important and that's what's being discussed at this conference. My experience suggests that the more inequities you have, the less resilient our communities actually are. If you can't afford it, it doesn't matter how resilient it is, you, you, you don't, you don't, you're not in it. And I just want to emphasize that it's really important for us to be looking at these issues through an intersectional lens and I'll end on that. Enough already. We got to go. It's time to move forward. Like we can't just sit and talk anymore. We have to make serious progress in a short period of time. We're behind. The implications are catastrophic. We've got to do this and we can.